Hello friends, let us try to understand Azure Data Factory with an example. I have three things on my agenda here. First I would like to define my problem statement. Then I would like to discuss the key concepts in Azure Data Factory. And finally I would like to walk you through an example of how we can solve the problem with Azure Data Factory. A gaming company collects logs that are produced by games in the cloud. To analyze these logs effectively, the company needs to use the reference data such as customer information in an on-premise data store. The company wants to create data-driven workflows to ingest log data and create reports on top of SQL Azure from the logs that are generated on a daily basis. The company needs to do basically two things, summarize data and dump summarize data. This entire workflow needs to happen in the cloud and the company needs to run these workflows every week. Welcome to Azure Data Factory, a data orchestration service in the cloud. This is Ravi and in this video, I will walk you through how we can solve the problem with Azure Data Factory. But before that, let us understand the key concepts. We need to understand and define four key concepts. They are pipelines and activities, data sets, linked services, and gateway. But that's only if you have an on-premise data store. But the beauty is all of them can be defined with the help of a simple JSON document. A data factory can have one or more pipelines a pipeline is a logical grouping of activities that together perform a task. There can be two types of activities in a pipeline, data movement or a copy activity, and data transformation activities like use SQL store procedure or a IVE activity. Each activity can have zero or more input data sets, which represent the input for an activity in the pipeline and they produce one or more output data sets that represent the output for an activity in the pipeline. Data sets contain information like the schema of the data, the table name that your data set refers to if it is a SQL based data set, or a location path if it is a file based data like blob storage. The data sets that are defined in the Azure Data Factory require a connection string to connect to your cloud or on-premise data to fetch the data for further processing. Linked services contain information like connection strings and authentication details like tokens or user ID and password. Linked services allow you to connect to different data stores like Azure Data Lake Store or a blob storage or a SQL Azure database. If you are fetching data from an on-premise data store or an Azure VM, you need to create a linked service to your VM. But having a connection details to the VM in the linked services will not work because ADF is a cloud service and it cannot directly pull the data from VM. For this reason, you need to create a gateway and in this case, the linked services will point your gateway and the gateway is responsible for moving your on-premises data store to cloud. There are two gateways that we need to create. One is the logical gateway created within ADF that just points to the physical gateway which is installed on your VM. And it is the physical gateway that is responsible for moving your on-premise data. Having understood the concept, let us go through a practical example. Let us recall the problem statement and the overall architecture that tries to solve the problem. We have a blob storage that contains the log data generated by business every day. And then we have the customer reference data in the on-premise SQL server. The use SQL activity in data lake analytics run every week to ingest both these data stores and summarizes the data at weekly level because the business actually needs to report at weekly level. And the summarized data is stored in a data lake store. So in the next step, 
the summarized data is copied to SQL Server and the entire orchestration, if you see, it runs within the ADF and this ADF architecture has two different activities. The first activity is the USQL activity which produces the summarized data and the second activity is a copy activity that copies the data from data lake store and dumps that into a SQL Azure database. Let us see how we can translate this architecture within Azure Data Factory. First, we consume the data from a block store and for that we create data sets that represent the file within the block store and link it services that connect to the block storage. At the same time, we consume the data from on-premises SQL Server and for that we create the data set that represent the table and link it services and gateway that is required to pull the data from our on-premise data store. Every week this activity runs and the summarized data is made available in the data lake store. Another activity starts and copies the data from the data lake store to the SQL Azure. Since the components are similar for both these activities, we will only talk about the first activity which is the use SQL activity. Here we have the overall architecture and the architecture that we have replicated within the Azure Data Factory for the first USQL activity. On the right side, you see the JSON that is used to define the pipeline for the first activity. In the JSON, we define the name of the pipeline, the type of activity that we are running on our data, the input data sets that are consumed by our activity namely the Azure blob and the SQL Server table. We also define the output where the output is stored, in this case a data lake store. Further, we define the schedule frequency for this pipeline which is once a week and start and end dates during which the pipeline will be active. Remember that the schedule frequency of the pipeline and the output data set needs to match. Once we have defined the pipeline, we need to define the input data set and type of data set as Azure Blob and the linked service that it uses to connect to the Azure Blob. Then comes the schema of the data set, the folder path of its location and column delimiter since it is a file based data store. Further, you also need to specify the availability of this data set which is once a day. It means that every day this data is available for our consumption. Similarly, we need to define JSON data sets for on-premise data store and Azure data lake store. Once we define the data set, the next step is to define the linked service that the data set will use to connect to the data store. Here we have a linked service that will connect to block store and some other connection details like the account name and account key. Similarly, we define linked services for on-premise data store and Azure data lake store. Since we are connecting to an on-premise, we need to point to a logical gateway that the linked service refers to. The logical gateway is defined within a UI in the Azure data factory. Once we define the logical gateway, we need to go and download the physical gateway and install it in the server where our SQL server is hosted and register with the key that will be shown here. It is the physical gateway that will ultimately pull the customer data from SQL server to Azure Data Lake Store. So far, we have defined all the components for the first activity. The next activity is a copy activity that takes the data from data lake store and dumps into SQL Azure database. For this, as we have already defined the components for data lake store, we only need to define the components for SQL Azure that will be pretty similar to the ones that we have already covered. So I will skip that in this video. Now go and deploy the solution within the Azure Data Factory.
the availability of the input data set is set to once a day. This means that every day new data will be available at the respective data stores. The availability of the output data set is set to once a week. Remember that this is the schedule for the pipeline as well and they both need to be the same. This means that only once a week we will have the final output in the data lake store. The schedule of the output data set drives the execution of the pipeline and this pipeline will run every week. So every week the pipeline will inspect the on-premises data and it will pull the data from the SQL server. And every week it will pull the log data that are produced daily and it takes the data from these two different data stores and run USQL queries on them in Azure Data Lake Store and produces the final summarized output and store it in the Data Lake Store. Once this activity is complete, the next copy activity will begin and it copies the data from Data Lake Store to SQL Azure. This is how the organization can orchestrate the daily data and create weekly reports at the SQL level.